Buenos dias. Good morning. It's uh, Father's Day weekend. And I want to make this video about my dad. I um, grew up hating him most of my life. And I remember finding inspiration in movies um, of children who ended up you know, eliminating their father. Um, you know, these were the uh, some of the movies they showed in the 80s. I remember one about a father who was really abusive to the family. And the son, um, you know, he, he, he became really militant. Um, the dad was a military person, uh, overly authoritative. Um, and the kid killed him. And I remember talking about that with my little sisters and saying I was going to save us and, and, um, and do that. And I didn't. Um, but part of the reason I got in trouble is because I thought I had to do that before I turned 18. So I wouldn't face the death penalty. And when my dad died, and even before that, um, I was already coming to a different place in my mind with him. Um, he was a fall down, pass out in the street, alcoholic. Um, and in a way, he, he kind of taught me that this really is a disease because when he was sober, when he'd go periods without drinking, he was a rock star, like everybody in town knew him, or well, at least the Mexican community. They invited him. They wanted him around. Uh, when he'd go to prison uh, for DUIs, racks, hit and runs, um, like people would come visit him, business owners, bar owners. Um, he had a lot of support in the community as long as he was sober. If he was drunk, he was offensive to everybody. He was fighting with everybody. And then he'd come home and beat up my mom and yell at us and call us names. Um, and, and, and was just a really mean and, and violent drunk. And he was drunk most of the time. Um, I, I, I really hated him. And I think some of that started ending when my mom told me that as a little kid, um, he was sold to another family as a worker for their farm. And, you know, my grandfather and his brothers and their family, they they were poor folks when they were little kids in Guanajuato. And that did something to them where they became obsessed with making money. And eventually they became incredibly wealthy, um, incredibly wealthy. And I guess to get there, you know, they were always working. My grandma was always working. My grandfather was always working. They they sold the kids or rented them out to other families as workers. Um, and these are little kids. And I don't know what that did to my dad. Um, but I figured it was very painful. And that was some of his inner demons that led him to drink. Um, and, and I figured I hadn't been through anything that bad. And so I started to... Um, appreciate that he didn't drink just because he wanted to be an asshole. Um, he had a lot of pain in him. And, and that's how he addressed it. And unfortunately, um, we we caught the, the side effects of it in our home. And it did a lot of damage to our family emotionally. Um to grow up in such a dysfunctional household. Um, even in the projects, we were um, like poorer than the dads who drank less. Because um, my dad would blow our money on, on, on alcohol. Um, for the longest time, I didn't learn to save because I had a piggy bank and it was almost full. And I was maybe 10 years old and he stole it to buy beer. And and I figured, I remember thinking, well, why bother saving um, if it's just going to get taken from me? And so I didn't save, learn to save until practically just a few years ago. Um, and 
So that was kind of what we went through with him. Um, it, it it's it's to the point where, you know, he even recently I I say I'm at a friend's birthday party or or, or some type of family event, and their moms are there. And a lot of these moms, my homeboys' moms, I really, uh, I love. And the, and the ones that passed away, may they rest in peace, because a lot of them protected me. You know, I'd be hanging out with my friends, and all the parents knew each other. They worked together. And my dad would pull up drunk and start yelling at me and berating me. And the moms would jump in sometimes. Hey, you're not going to treat him like that at, in our house. You could do that in your house, but you're not going to do it in ours. And they always protected me. Um... But I, I did feel a little bit of pain when, even as an adult, I'd be at these events and the moms would come up to me and ask how I'm doing. And then almost, um, like not understanding, they would ask, why would he treat you so bad? And, um, and when he died, I kind of knew why. I don't think he knew how to be a father, but he wanted to instill the lessons in me that would help me later on in life. And the way paisas educated their kids back then, a lot of them was apatadas at the end of a foot or a fist. And so if we get if we did something wrong, we might have not necessarily been told the right way. Um, instead, we were hit or, 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 or berated. I mean, I'm surprised I don't think my name is Pinchi Baboso or Hijo Tu Puta Madre. I mean, that was how he called me when he was drunk. And then um, my grandfather passed away. And my dad, who was previously passed out in the park drunk, uh, now inherited you know, millions of dollars. And so he went back to Mexico and, um, and then he came back one time and I didn't want nothing to do with him. I thought, you know, just cause you have money now doesn't mean you're a different person. And I just had a kid and he wanted to hold her. And I said, no, you know, your, 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 your problems with alcohol stop hurting the family with this generation and I didn't let him hold her, and that really makes me sad now. Because when he died, I realized that he did those things because he didn't want me to be him, and he didn't know how to be a father. He didn't know how to teach me those lessons um, any other way than hitting me and calling me names for doing the wrong thing. And, and I realized that never once in his life did he encourage me to steal. Never once in his life did he encourage me to take advantage of others um by stealing from them he was a thief he 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 stole he he would steal in front of me um when one of the nicer memories i have of him was it was my birthday and uh he was a little bit drunk said get in the car i was scared to get in the car but he took me to uh the store jemco and um and he went in there and just started sticking hella like clothes and video games in his pants and when we walked outside the store, he handed them all to me and said, happy birthday. And um, he drove around with an M1 in the trunk all the time. He would pull it out on people. He would shoot at people. When he was drunk, um, he'd wreck the cars and in the hospital. He'd spend months in the hospital. And um, he, he was just, he, he just, that alcohol really, really had him. His inner demons had him. Um, and and so he died alone. Um, he'd been dead 
for a little bit when they found him. Um, he was lying on a bed, you know, covered in bed sores, and 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 um, it was still in a big house he owned, but it was empty. Um, and and it was just a really really sad death. And when he died, I wish I could have told him that I understood that why he was like that. I understood why he resented me in a lot of ways. I think um, when I was born, um, I was the first grandkid in, on that side of the family, on both sides of the family. And, um, and I was a little bit of a golden child to them, I think. And I think he was jealous of that because he'd never been loved um, that way by his own family. Um, and then I think when he'd try to discipline me, my mom would kind of try to intervene. Um, a lot of Mexican moms are huge alcahuetas, and he would always call her that. And my mom told me that, you know, she would kind of be an alcahueta a little bit because she felt like she had to make up for all the abuse he would heap on me. Um... You know, I felt like I couldn't breathe because I would breathe wrong. I tried to comb my hair back. You know, he's you can't comb your hair back because that's what the the cholos that go to prison do. And um, and you know, he was going to prison his damn self, but um, it was just really oppressive environment. You felt like you couldn't breathe because it would set him off against you. And um, and 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 you know i think when we'd go to mexico and visit his grandfather um you know just out of respect we had to kiss his grandfather's hand and manners were just so emphasized in in, in having good manners and and you know i made a video about being mal educado uh, which means poorly raised and uh, or poorly educated but it's a synonym to poorly raised mal criado and he really, what he did and, and, and how he did it was, what he, what he did was right. How he went about it was wrong and it actually pushed me to being malcriado in some ways. But the goals he was trying to teach me were those old Mexican values of respect and manners. And I would say that those lessons he gave me have actually helped me navigate the world in a way that allowed me to succeed and, and accomplish a lot um, in my career. Giving people that respect that was instilled in me is appreciated wherever you go, and that opens doors for you. So um, I regret that I wasn't able to tell him that. I regret that I wasn't able to tell them that I forgive him and I don't have any hard feelings towards him, that um, that actually I love him. You know, I do love him. And that's hard to say. Uh, well, it's not hard to say, but um, it's just not something that anyone would have expected me to say 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But I do love him. And I'm really, really sorry that I couldn't tell him what I'm telling you guys about him. He died thinking that his son hated him. Or we hadn't spoke for 20 years. And the last time we spoke, I wouldn't let him hold his grandbaby. And I got to think that shit would make me drink. After that whole life. And he had the world by the tail. He could have been anything. But he died alone. Thinking his kid hated him. And really, I love him. Despite all that. And much props to my mom. For having to play the father and the mom. 
for large periods of time. And so, that's who I'll think about on Father's Day. Hope you dads have a good Father's Day. Your mom's playing both roles. Have a good Father's Day. Peace.